Greetings and welcome to the Northmen. Today I am invading small islands, you know, archipelago islands. Because this is an island surrounded by water, big water, ocean water. This is not Archipelago, the big board game, which came out a few years, a few years ago. No, this is a board game that came out just now. The game is Ilos, from designer Frederic Gerard and, and artist Paul Mafayon. The designer, uh, he came out with uh, Titanium Wars a few years back, and the company La Boite de Gel, yeah, they came out with Outlive, which was a Kickstarter uh, board game a couple of years back. And it had quite a nice reception. As I have not tried it myself, but there you have it. The game is called Ilos, and you have magnificent colors on the front here, which kind of says this will be a family-friendly game, which it is. It says here, it takes 45 minutes to play, well, less than an hour is more accurate, uh, two to five players, and the age group is 10 years and above. Well, you could probably go lower, but it's okay. So we have blue barrels and red sacks and yellow gold to trade. Or is it trading? Let's find out. So before me, you see some beautiful colored tiles, some nice contrasty colors on the player colors as well. Some nice ship tokens and some figure tokens and a deck of cards. Now, everything is actually explained on this screen here, on the back side. Here's everything you can do in the game. But, you can't just do it. You have to have the card. And the cards will say what you can do. But, it, it isn't enough just to have the card to do it. You also need more cards to pay the cost. Because the cards themselves are also the currency in the game. So, let's say I want to play... Uh, oh, here we go. This card here. So to raid a temple. To build this, or to use the card, I need to expend seven other cards in addition to this. So I play this, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I can't even afford it. But let's say I could. Seven. I discard seven cards, and I play this one, and I do the action. So that is it to play the game. You just need to know how the card works, and then let's find out what you can actually do in the game. So. In front of me here, I have a nice island, and I can expand with more islands. The game has six action cards, these six cards, which are all explained on the back side of your sheet. Uh, I find this a bit confusing, more than it is helpful, actually. So I just learn those actions, it's not hard, um, and just use those. So the actions you can do are based on the cards you have, but you remember, you always have to pay the cost in other cards. Now, the game is played until one player has put out his last uh, Pioneer, which is one of the ten figures you come with. But, first I'm going to go through the cards and tell you what they do. And then we can see how you can actually win the game, as if I would know that. So, the first card is this one. Here, you can sail out, uh, either become a pirate or explore the area. So, you have two options. Become a pirate. You take a ship on a pirate space, like so. All the neighboring islands to this tile here, uh, to the, on this tile, uh, are now pirated. So, for all other players, they have to have to pay the extra red cost on the cards, like this one. There's two types of costs. One is for without pirates, and the other one with pirates. Of course, you won't uh, affect yourself, but it's uh, annoying for other players. Now, the other one you can do is take one of these three tiles here and uh, explore. So, expand even. Put it out here and place a ship on it. Now, you can also place move an existing ship, but you can also place new ships. And that's what you want to do in the beginning, of course. Now, I have two ships on this island. The second one is building. You see a build action here. Now, notice it says two ships here. So, you need two ships on the island you want to build on. And you need to pay two or four cards based on pirates or not. And the two types of building there are, is a fort. Now, the fort will protect you from other pirates. So if you have a fort on the island, which is affected by pirates, you only pay the normal cost of cards. Also, the fort will help you get more cards for each round. The other one is a market. Market is very nice. You put the market, and you copy an existing resource. 
one of the red, blue, or black resource. So let's say black, put it on here, uh, add your figure on it to say you own it. And once you get a resource, you take a resource from the supply and put it in front of your screen. Why do you do that? Well, every round you produce whatever you have in front here. So now you produce one black resource. So you take it and put it behind your screen. Now whatever is behind the screen is your actual score, which is based on the points of the game. And the points are on this sheet here. So this now indicates that blue, red and black are each worth one point. You take the left most visible uh, number. But gold is twice that valuable, so gold is much harder to get. And you want gold. So the next action is build a resource supply. Or build a mine some resources, maybe. Uh, one ship is required, and you pay the cards, of course. Put your man on the uh, or pioneer or on the resource you want and take the corresponding resource in front of your screen. Now I produce two black every round, so I put two tokens behind my screen when I'm done with my turn. Awesome. The next action is a gold supply, which is exactly the same as this one, although this one requires two ships on the island, and can be quite expensive if you have pirates there. But then, the same stuff, you take your token on the island, on the, red, on the gold spot, Take the gold in front of your screen and gain the resources once more. So two black and a gold this time. Of course, I had to have two ships on the island to do that. So you need to plan ahead. Then the action is to raid a temple. So this one only costs seven cards only, but you only need one ship. And when you do that, you don't gain a resource, but you, you take three gold tokens and put it directly behind the screen. And they could potentially be worth uh, 30 points at the end of the game, because gold can go up to 10 points each. The last one is to increase the value of the resource. To do that, you don't pay any cards, but you need to pay with a resource from behind the screen of the chosen uh, resource you want to increase. So pay a black one, take one of these tokens here and put on the black row. And now each black piece is worth 2 points each. And you can do this four times per resource. So two, three, and four. Now the black are worth five per piece. And you can notice there are only eight pieces on this board. So once there have been, have been eight upgrades in total in the game, no more upgrades can be done. So you need to time it well. Should you uh, sacrifice your own resources to uh, increase the value? Well, make sure that you are the only one with that resource at the moment. But if you're too late, Maybe you can't even increase what you have a hoard of behind the screen. Now, the game uh, lasts maximum one hour. And uh, it has a very nice length to it for what you get. And there's little downtime because there's really not that much you can do on your turn. Uh, because you, you spend all the cards all the time. Now, you, you can save the cards from each round if you want to. Uh, there's no hand limit. But if everybody's doing that and the, the draw deck is empty, then you have to start drawing from each other, and that is a pain. Uh, and one time I played the game uh, with an error. I had played before, and then from memory I did the rules, and I forgot you could do as many actions as you can or want to on your turn. So we did one action each turn, and then draw drew cards. So there was, it was impossible to get rid of cards. And at one point we just started drawing from each other, like, yeah, let's just stop drawing from each other and uh, just do one action, whatever because all the cards are between the players. And that was, it ruined the game totally. <laughs> but if you can do as many actions as you want, then the game flows nicely, and it is a very nice family-friendly game. And the colors are nice, the actions are nice, everything is nice in this game. Uh, I can't really say anything bad about it. Now, uh, it is hard to win the game, uh, just because of the dynamics, because if one player gets one resource, and kind of gets the monopoly on it, he will most likely win because he has a, a whole pile of the resources back on his screen. So if the other player doesn't cooperate and try to increase the value of the other resources, he will win. But of course, that player doesn't necessarily have to win because if he doesn't get the cards that, that can increase the value, well, then the value is only one for each of those resources. Uh, and if two players have the same resource, who of them are going to increase the value? Because if I increase the value of the resource, I have to spend those points on you. 
and you're thinking the same thing. So if I'm increasing the value, maybe I'm giving you the victory. But if none of us are increasing the value, maybe the other players will do so with other resources and they will win. So there's a nice self-balancing thing in the game. And yeah, the game plays uh, easily under an hour. I have not played it with two players yet. Uh, I just It's not the game I'm thinking of when I think two players. I have I think I have many other options instead. But for three, four or five players, this is a very easy recommendation. So Ilos from uh, La Boat de Jeu and designer Frédéric Gerard. It's a thumbs up, definitely. And it, it is, an, well, I can give it a seal of excellence, no problem. I really enjoy this game. Uh, well, there we have it. I have invaded all these islands now, and uh, my throat has also been invaded by some germ, I think, because it's, rah, it really hurts to speak. Oh, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and as always, please check out on my Patreon account, on patreon.com slash to see how you can support me financially, and how you can um, have your say at what game I'm going to review in the future. And uh, any suggestions, please come and say, and uh, for 2018, I am getting new equipment, finally. And thank you so much for my Patreon backers who have backed me so uh, consistently, and I really appreciate it. And now I can finally reap the rewards of that uh, for next year, and I hope it's going to be fantastic. Anyway, thanks for watching, and see ya. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. <laughs>